I really like my Terminator X, but one of the biggest challenges has been finding some idle settings that work best for a manual transmission. It seems like Holly is more used to tuning and designing their systems for automatic transmissions, but for manual transmissions, there's a different idle strategy and settings that I think work better. And so I'm gonna help walk you through those and what worked best for me. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the blade on the throttle body is set where we need it. First, we need to make sure that the engine is up to temperature. So we're going to do that. It's 183 degrees. That's where, we, that's where our thermostat opens, so we're good. So the engine's up to temperature. We want to make sure that the idle air control motor is not open too far, but not, but, or, and also not open too little. You adjust that by the bottom of the throttle body here. There's a screw back here. You can adjust your angle on this 65 millimeter throttle body. So I have it adjusted so where the idle air control motor is between 30 and 0%. The instructions tell you you need it about 2% or something like that, but this pulse width modulated idle air control motor that's on Ford's, which is right there, is not the same thing as a stepper motor. And so it's it moves around quite a bit. Sometimes it's 0, sometimes it's 25, sometimes it's 30. As long as it's somewhere under 40, in my experience, it's fine, you can adjust it a little bit if you need to, but you can see it's slowly going down. But as long as it's on the motor just a little bit, but not using it over 50%, I think then the throttle body angle is just fine. With the throttle body angle set to where it's, uh, it idles pretty much on its own and it only needs the idle air control motor just a little bit, then we can go into these settings uh, in the Terminator X menu and I'm gonna show you some of the settings that work really well for my manual transmission, five liter Mustang. So we go to tuning, advanced, and then advanced idle. First thing I'm gonna talk about is ramp, well, let's go back, fat fingers, ramp down. The IAC hold position, this is the position that the idle air control motor will hold above 3% throttle. So when you're driving around, this is the idle air control hold position. You want some kind of air uh, going, I mean, you want some level of idle air control flow because then when it comes down to idle, there's, there's actually a base level of flow there before it, uh, you know, so that it can recover more quickly. The ramp decay, this is something that is really, uh, is really sensitive. So I have mine set to one and a half seconds. If you have it set to something more than it takes the engine to settle down after a, a higher throttle, what'll happen is the, you'd think that it would just settle down more slowly to an idle, but it doesn't. What happens is it, dro it drops like a stone and then tries to recover really quick. So I'll, I'll show you that when, what happens when you change this ramp decay to something else in just a minute. So let's go ahead and start the engine and I'll change it and we'll, I'll show you what happens. Just to demonstrate, I have the IAC ramp decay set to five seconds. Now you'd think what would happen is that the engine would just go from its park position and then settle down nice and slowly down to the idle speed over a five second time period. But what happens is you'll see that the idle comes down and then actually what happens is it drops like a stone and then what, what hap the, the over five seconds it just surges until it finds its idle speed. So here, I'm gonna show you. Here's, uh, here's with a five second delay, or at five second decay time. So I give it some throttle, hold it, then we're gonna let it go. Drops, surges, surges. And, and it's worse when it's cold. So what happens is, now check this out. When I change this to one and a half seconds, it doesn't have time to surge, okay? Okay, I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to let it go. See, and it just settles down nicely. So that's why having a shorter ramp decay works better. I've even tried it at zero, and zero is okay as well, but there's some other, it's, it's it, that doesn't seem to work all, the, all that well because there's other times when you want a little bit of a decay. You don't want the, the, idle, the idle air control motor to go from 45 to zero right away. So um, that, that's, that's the IAC ramp decay setting that seemed to work really well for me. The next thing is the idle air control ramp to start above idle. So this is the uh, RPM above, which, uh, above idle, which they'll go from 45% to zero. So if I, I've, I've experimented with this quite a bit and 
I've tried it from zero to higher numbers. A thousand RPM for me seems to be roughly what it need, what it likes. Um, there's a bunch of other consequences if you change it to zero or if you make it higher than this. Um, sometimes the idle will hang if it's too low. Sometimes, uh, so if it's too low, the idle the, the the engine can hang even for random reasons that I can't even figure out. So since my idle is 750 RPM at 1750 RPM will be below that, will the idle air control motor will start to ramp down back to zero. Um, that's the setting that seems to work best for me. Yours may be different, but I'd at least start here. Okay, let's go back out to this, to the main, uh, main menu here. My fingers, I can't use the stylus and hold the phone at the same time, so we're just gonna have to deal with it. All right, idle air control, let's check that. This should be set to five liter forward. If it's not, that means your idle air control motor is not gonna work. Um, choosing, ha having this set to, um, to five liter forward uh, means that it sets the pulse width modulated uh, idle air control versus a stepper motor. So that needs to be on, otherwise the idle air control won't even work. IAC startup, let's talk about this. I have my IAC parked uh, cranking uh, setting between 60 and 50%. It means that it starts at 60% uh, when it's cold and then goes down to 50% when, uh, when it's warm. So this seems to be work, work pretty well for me. Um, you can change this somewhat and it uh, affects it somewhat, but I'll this is doesn't seem to be too critical Ugh. hopefully that yeah that won't it won't save that change with my fat fingers okay uh iac start up hold time so i found that if this is set to zero the iac parked cranking position is doesn't really come into much of a play and and the iac start up decay time doesn't matter anyway because this hold time is zero i have it set to zero and i'm going to show you why when it's set to zero what happens is when the engine is cranking um, it the, EC, the the Terminator X seems to think that okay I need to increase the idle air control motor and um, to to make it idle better because it hasn't started yet so this actually seems to work really well I'll show you so it, it jumps up and then settles down nicely no problem at all now I'll show you what happens when we change this to something else so it's going to start back up. I'm going to go back into advanced idle, IAC startup. If we change this to, oh boy, fat fingers again. Anyway, if we change this to, um, well, let's just set it to 2.2 seconds since that's what it wants to do. Um, we'll save that or seven seconds. How about that? All right. Anyway, 4.2 seconds. So what's going to happen is it's going to, the engine is going to start up and then the idle air control is going to hold that 50% position because that's where we are right here. It's at the 50% section on the graph. So it's going to hold 50% for 4.2 seconds. Then it's going to decay down to whatever it needs to for the idle over a two second period. But what ends up, in theory, that would be great. But what ends up happening is you'll see that it, it'll surge a little bit. Okay, so now it's holding at 50% for four seconds. Now it came off of the four seconds and it's going to surge a little bit. This is not a huge problem, but when it's cold, it is a problem because the it surges wildly when the engine is cold. So I have found that actually changing it like I had before to uh, to zero seconds makes the makes it's uh, the startup much much better uh, since it doesn't even come into play. It really doesn't this hold position and and the decay time doesn't come into play. So I found that to be the most successful. The last thing to check is idle spark. Idle spark control uh, is, it should be enabled in my opinion. Um, that is the default and it makes the idle speed a lot more, a lot more stable um, versus if it's turned off, sometimes the idle can surge. Um, and I believe the P and D terms, those look like the, uh, those might be the default settings, but if not, you can play with those a little bit, but I haven't really found much of a difference. So those are my settings there. With uh, idle speed is the last thing. This is just your preference. Um, you can change it to whatever you need to. Um, I have mine set to 1,000 RPM until the engine warms up, and then it goes down to 750 RPM. That should cover it. Um, so with the, idle, uh, with the idle settings, just keep in mind that 
a manual transmission car is going to behave quite a bit differently than an automatic transmission car and the settings that you can that you can get away with are going to be a lot different than with a manual transmission car so um, feel free to experiment with some of those different settings and see if you can make improvements if you don't like the way it behaves but like I said those were some of the basic settings that I've set and I've I would recommend those as a kind of a starting point um, for your manual transmission 5 liter Mustang.